Welcome to the first episode of Parkour Science. These explanations and tutorials are designed to help beginners and experts alike improve their techniques and understanding of their movement. Today we will be looking at the underlying dynamics of the wall run. The wall run or wall jump and the pop vault are, are techniques used to overcome particularly large obstacles. One cool fact about the wall run is many tracers can reach a height of 12 feet. At 12 feet, a tressor experiences more than 2.5 Gs, that's the equivalent of 2.5 times your body weight, through the bottom leg alone. The wall run can be broken up into four key parts. The run up, the initial jump, the interaction with the vertical wall, and the climb up. We will be analyzing the first three portions of the technique, leaving the climb up for a later video specifically geared towards climb ups. The three other parts of this technique are full of overlapping dependent variables, so we will have to jump around back and forth from time to time. So let's begin with the run-up. Any experienced tracer should be able to tell you that the run-up into a wall run isn't a full-on sprint, nor is it a slow jog. So the question is, what determines the speed of the run-up? The answer is probably not what you would expect. The speed of the run-up is determined by the tracer's maximum vertical leap and the grip of his or her shoe on the wall, and can be determined with this equation. And this is where those dependent variables come into play. We will come back to this equation. We jump to the interaction with the wall. When your foot hits the wall, two primary forces come into play. The frictional force, which attempts to keep your foot from sliding downward, and the normal force, which is best described as the wall resisting the push of your foot, holding you back from going through it. The frictional force is dependent on the normal force and the coefficient of friction represented by the Greek letter mu. The coefficient of friction is what you probably refer to as the grip of the wall or shoes, and is between 0 and 1. Shoes with good rubber like Kos, Kalenjis, Ariakis, 510s, other parkour shoes on a clean concrete or brick wall have a coefficient of friction of nearly 1, which means when you plug it into our friction equation, normal equals frictional. When horizontal force is equal to vertical force, the resulting total force is in a 45 degree angle, which appears here and though not as obviously, here. Now to keep from flying away from the wall, we need to cancel this part out. And this will happen by having an equal force coming from the run-up. Added to your max vertical leap, the total result will be upward motion. This bottom angle gives us some further insight. Because it is 45 degrees, this length and this length are equal. The length is ideally the length of your legs. This gives you an easy reference for your takeoff point and the point your foot should hit the wall. Also, because it is 45 degrees, this portion is proportional to vertical speed and this portion horizontal speed. So your run-up speed will equal your vertical leap takeoff speed. The speed of your vertical takeoff, in terms of your jump height, is given by this equation. But this is all for an ideal case, perfect grip and thus a 45 degree angle. What if the grip is not ideal, or your shoes are not ideal? This certainly is the case more often than not. In that case, this variable mu is smaller, and that means that in order to get the same friction we need to jump up the wall, we need the normal force to be higher. This means the run-up needs to be faster, and this angle will be lower, which in turn means you should be jumping from a little further. As friction decreases, this trend continues, but with it, down goes the maximum height possible in a wall run. This goes on until the friction is such that the wall run is no longer physically possible for you on that wall. This happens for the average well-trained tracer at a mu around 0.5 or 0.6. So if your jumping distance reaches nearly twice your leg length, the wall run may be impossible. But this is pretty rare. With all of this information and some derivation, I've found the equation for maximum wall run height of any given tracer to be the following. With good grip, a tracer's maximum wall run is given by this equation. This changes and can be calculated for every tracer. Taking my own individual stats, start with leg length, and then add maximum vertical leap, and add reach from foot to hand for the maximum wall run height possible with perfected technique. Now you probably aren't carrying a speedometer, accelerometer, or even a tape measure on you while you train, so how is this useful to you? 
Well, using this information, you can quickly correct mistakes. Step one, check the grip. Walk up to the wall, test your footing, see if the grip is okay. Step two, note your expected takeoff point. If grip is nearly perfect, it should be your leg length, a little bit of a slip, move it back by six to 12 inches. Step three, note your wall placement height. This is again your leg length and actually will never change regardless of frictional force. For wall runs, this is a constant. Step four, run up with a powerful fast jog. Step five, jump hard off the ground and start looking up the wall. Step six, hit the wall and jump upward, placing the opposite hand high on the wall. You should be staring at the top by now. Step seven, reach for the top with the other hand. Step eight, catch and quickly transition into a cat hang. Step nine, climb up. A couple of hints. With all things parkour, try to avoid stutter stepping in your run up. The hand placement on the wall can be replaced with a second less influential step. The final result will be approximately the same. Be sure not to push away from the wall with this though. Some people will suggest pulling your other knee up in front of you for more height. This does not work. If it did, it would violate Newton's first and third laws. You can do this to use a second step, but pulling your knee upward does not provide more height in and of itself. Now we come to one of the most important parts, troubleshooting. Problem number one. When I hit the wall, my foot slips too much to jump up. Possible causes of this. The wall is too slippery. Your foot is placed too low. This should be obvious to someone watching you from the outside. Run up is too slow. Jumping from too close to the wall. This will also cause you to nearly or completely crash into the wall. Jumping from way too far from the wall. This is pretty unlikely. Pushing down too much. If you have proper speed and you push down too much, you will end up running into the wall pretty hard. Problem two. I bounce back, but not up enough. This can be caused by not jumping hard enough off the bottom foot, jumping from a little too far away, not pushing down enough on the wall, or placing the wall foot too high. Again, this could be seen from the outside. Either of these problems could also be a combination of things. The most common mistake I see is a slow run up and a low foot placement on the wall. Try and be aware of all these things and have someone try to spot for you to see what they think you're doing wrong. Not pushing down enough on the wall. Many people have difficulty with this. The force applied with the foot should be at a 45 degree angle for a wall with good grip and a little bit lower for a wall with not as good grip. This is a difficult thing to gauge. My best suggestion is to think of it not just as pushing down at 45 degrees, but trying to simultaneously keep yourself from running into the wall and jump straight upward. Lastly, we have some troubleshooting for more advanced dressurs. This is something that is very rarely done by the average dressur, but was found in my research to be a very useful technique. It involves the use of static friction. In physics, there are two kinds of friction, static friction and kinetic friction. Kinetic friction, always less than static friction. As a result, if your wall run contains kinetic friction, you could lose as much as 25% of your power going up the wall. There are a few things to try in order to combat this. When your foot hits the wall, if it makes a loud sound, or any noise at all for that matter, it's likely that that excitation will automatically start you with kinetic friction. In order to get static friction, it's best to try and gently place your foot on the wall to make less noise. Now this is hard to do at a full run, so one of the best ways to go about this is to focus on placing your foot on the wall softly and then increase your power throughout the thrust to reach maximum power as you leave the wall with that foot. Rather than kicking, it's more of an explosive shove. This technique of using static friction can in fact increase your wall run by a significant amount. 